I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer for Gold Derby, and I'm joined today by Sarah Bennett, the Oscar-winning visual effects supervisor of The Woman King. So Sarah, uh, to start things off, I would like to dig into your research process for this film because it takes place obviously in the kingdom of Dahomey, which which was located within present day Benin in 1823. So what was some of the research you did in order to understand not just the landscape of Dahomey, but also the intricate world of the Agogia at that time? Yeah, so um, our uh, production designer, Akeen, um, and his assistant, uh, his researcher, basically gathered uh, a lot of information uh, like a lot actually which was great for for us um, a lot of imagery you know which was hard to get um, you know we also looked at locations that still exist and actually there was a there was a show on Netflix called I think it was called High on the Hog um, you know which gave you a little insight as well as uh, uh, of the of the world um, that we were looking at so uh, we had a lot of research from them um, which was really really useful you know particularly in the sort of world building uh, that we you know we had to do. Absolutely. And I read that you even traveled to Ghana to capture some photogrammetry. Is that correct? Yeah, we did. Actually, it was great. It was the uh, the last week we finished doing all the uh, principal photography mm -hmm. and a very small unit went to Ghana and we spent a week there. And it was, oh, it was amazing, like really incredible. Um, so it was a terrible job, but someone had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was great. Really, really lovely. That's great to hear. And, you know, once you had done your research and had an overview of the world that you were going to have to build, on a more general level, what were some of the discussions you had with Gina Prince Bythewood, the director, um, with the art direction uh, department, with the special effects team, etc., in terms of what was going to have to be created via visual effects in this movie? So, um, you know, we talked very early on, uh, which was great. And I'd worked with Gina previously. So, you know, we already had that relationship going into this, which is always really helpful. Uh, Akeem was great and very collaborative. So we had some very early discussions about you know, what they would build as art department um, and what we would like extend out, which is essentially, you know, all these environments and bring in the scope and depth to the world. Mm -hmm. the, the set builds were amazing, actually. Um, and a lot of the scenes within the palace was this incredible build that they did, uh, which gave us like 360 to shoot in. Mm -hmm. So sort of any high wides, you know, we would extend out to show this sort of bigger area. And we did like an establishing shot for that as well. Um, and I think the biggest thing with SFX stunts and uh, art department was the Oyo battle. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the whole film we shot on location in South Africa, which was, again, amazing. Um, beautiful, beautiful landscapes, uh, a great place to shoot. So we, um, we found this location that was like three fields, essentially. So we had to figure out, you know, what was going to be art department build, mm -hmm. what VFX would do. Um, There's obviously a lot of fire and smoke within this scene as well. So uh, SFX were a big key part of that. Explosions, there was jerk rigs as well mm -hmm. from the uh, stunts people. So it was very collaborative mm -hmm. on how we were going to build this scene um, between all the departments. Um, one of the things about Cape Town is uh, the wind is just crazy, total yeah. bonkers. Um, so, you know, for SFX, we're in this, it was in the middle of summer, very dry heat. Um, so, you know, it was always going to be hit and miss if we could set, you know, use the fire from SFX and the smoke was just blowing all over the place. So you lose it very quickly. So it became uh, really a big continuity piece for us mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, some days we'd have fire, sometimes we wouldn't. So, you know, it became very key that we would need to add in like CG fire, but also to the elements that we'd shoot with the guys in a controlled location and add them in later on. So, um it was, you know, a lot of discussions around those kind of things, really, mainly like big environments. Right. And, you know, let me follow up on a few things that you mentioned there, because and I've said this to almost everyone that I've talked to from the crew. But what I really noticed in rewatching the film is with how much reverence and admiration the kingdom of Dahomey, its population, its infrastructure, its nature um, is depicted. And a lot of that, of course, uh, is thanks to the visual effects, which adds so much depth to some of the locations that we see. So mm -hmm. talk a bit about the process that you already mentioned of extending, you know, the Dahomey palace and the kingdom itself beyond the set. Yeah, so um, like I said, the build was really substantial, which was great. But, you know, you'd have archways and doors open. So in areas like that, you know, we'd be putting green screen and building those areas out. You know, we did uh, LiDAR, a lot of photogrammetry textures. Mm -hmm. So we already had that world. So we weren't recreating something. You know, it was based off uh, the real builds from the art department, which was great. So uh, it was really extending out those areas. 
Mm -hmm. um, we get sort of the big high wides. And again, you're in this incredible landscape. You know, we're very lucky that we weren't having to clean out a lot of modernity um, mm -hmm. uh, there. So, you know, we had all the beautiful mountains in the background. So it's really taking that practical build and then just building it out. So give it this, you know, this bigger scope. And it was this thriving city, um, you know, which we had to create. So again, it, we, we had great reference to work with. Yeah, and you know, I'm actually very curious uh, about your collaboration with Polly Morgan in that uh, aspect, the movie's DP, because you know, when it came to some of those, you know, wide establishing shots of uh, the jungle, of the ocean, of the kingdom, you know, how did you ensure that the visual effects didn't overshadow the landscapes that you already had and were really in sync with the color palette, uh, the overall color palette that yeah. had already been established? Yeah, um, Polly was amazing to work with, like really VFX friendly, which is great for us. You know, so um, if we had to gather elements, for example, you know, she'd peel off a camera, let us go off on a splinter unit, shoot elements that we needed. At the same time, they were shooting um, sort of the uh, the main shoot. So mm -hmm. we got the same lighting because, you know, you get like four seasons in one day there. Yeah. So it was, I, it was really important that we, we kept that continuity and things looked right together. Um, so, you know... Polly was always looking for, I mean, the lighting there is beautiful, you know, oh, yeah. so, and, but the sky would change within an hour or it's rain and then the sun would come out. So there's always that panic of, you know, oh God, can we, can we get a sky replacement in? You know, we need to tie these scenes together. So it is very collaborative and I really, really enjoyed the process with her, um, you know, to sort of make these scenes work and everybody be happy with it. Yeah, and the colors are just so beautiful. Now, actually, get to the to the change the ever changing weather uh, in in just a second when we talk about the oil battle in more detail. But one sequence that I want to discuss before that um, is the one in Huida, in which uh, Naui and Naniska, um, you know, jump from that fort wall, um, which is quite an impressive scene. And I read that you only had one day to shoot it because yeah. you shot at a public swimming pool. <laughs> So oh, yeah. how did you how did you pull off that sense of height or steepness and make that jump look as realistic as possible? So yeah, you're right. We had one day to shoot, so we couldn't get any other days. There was no backup plan. So we, you know, we prevised and planned what we were going to shoot, how we were going to shoot it. Um, but on the day that we shot at the swimming pool, again the wind kicked in. So you know, we had all these uh, manitous with blue screens on that they would jump against. You know, everything was keyable uh, and easy to clean up, but we couldn't put them up, and we had to make a decision. So unfortunately, we had to shoot them, you know, and then we were against like trees and landscape. So it was not an easy task. And then they were going to be jumping against a really exposed, bright sky. So you can imagine, you know, that was uh, really tricky to get to work. Mm -hmm. um, for the height, you know, they the idea is they're jumping from the fort. Uh, our fort was a practical location in Cape Town. Um, okay. So we got the height distance from that. Uh, and then we worked out the heights for the pool jump, you know, and they had to be like 70 foot, off the ground, which is where the previous came into play. So we could, you know, figure it out where the camera's going to line up. We had to shoot this whole sort of rostrum to get them up onto as well. So it was like a live action of um, Naui and Naniska in doing the sort of leap off the wall, mm -hmm. uh, which then turned into digi doubles um, for the second part of the shot to give us that height, basically. And again, the landscape, we, we did like extensive photogrammetry, LIDAR um, of a place called Palmy, which is uh, the sort of what you see as they jump off the wall. Uh, so it was a combination of you know plates and CG basically. Yeah, it, it turned out so well. I mean, it's such a shocking scene in a way because you just don't expect it. I mean, yeah. if you watch the trailer, it was in the trailer uh, briefly, but it's still such a shocking scene. It's so well done. Um, and um, you had already mentioned the Oyo battle, and that's where I would like to go next because um, it's obviously one of the most intricate scenes uh, for you to work on, for everyone to work on. Uh, for a multitude of reasons, uh, from what I've understood. So walk me through some of the work you had to do from stunt previs to selling the scope and scale of what is a very climactic confrontation in this movie. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we shot with main unit and second unit, and we did a lot of days in this location. Uh, and, you know, again, we really had to have this open discussions with all departments. Mm -hmm. Um Stunts, you know, the the fight scenes were incredible, uh, led by Danny Hernandez, uh, really, really good action scenes. You know, so for us, from our point of view, you know, are they going to do the real stunts? Is there doubles, et cetera? You know, do we have to worry about any of that? But actually, they did a lot of their own fight scenes. I mean, they trained really, really hard, which was great. Um, but then we had, you know, people being blown up. So we'd have stunt actors on jerk rigs. So we had to work with that. There was a lot of uh, cleanup of like stunt mats on the grounds, you know, because it was in this uh, like wilderness, 
Um, you know, there was little yeah. pebbles everywhere and it was quite dangerous. So we had to obviously be careful with the um, the cast and all the extras. So uh, substantial cleanup work, but it was good. You know, we had that talk in advance. They did the sort of camouflage mats. So, it, you know, it wasn't going to be too painful, but inevitably as people are rolling around and fighting, you get mats flying up and it was really dusty. So all very, very tricky work um, to do. Um, and then, you know, it was about the weapon extensions because, again, for safety, right. you can't be hitting people in the face with uh, real uh, <laughs> weapons, obviously. So uh, there was a lot of um, wobbly bits that we had to stabilise um, throughout uh, and a lot of extensions of weapons as well. And, you know, now when she's holding the machete, which she did like an amazing job, you know, on the end, we just had like a green stuffy. Um, and then obviously we replaced that with the machete. So there's a lot of weapon uh, additions. And then, you know, as I said before, we figured out with art department, these three fields. So the middle fields was where all the art department build was. Mm -hmm. And they built that, uh, which was great. So again, we had practical reference. We could shoot LIDAR, photogrammetry. Um, and then the backfield was all visual effects. So we, you know, we just duplicated what was built by art department and recreated that in CG in the background. Uh, and then the main sort of first field was where a lot of the action happened. So we had a few shots. I mean, yeah, it was a pretty extensive scene actually. So we had shots of uh, Digidouble Oyo uh, running towards camera and that beautiful shot that Polly did, you know, where uh, the camera pans down and yeah, yeah. at each other, which is lovely. Um, and then, you know, when we're down in that camp where, again, we had to add a lot of additional fire, make sure the continuity was matching shot to shot, um, you know, which is really important. So it's very choreographed through that scene, you know, and we didn't want to overdo it with the fire and the smoke, but it had to feel atmospheric. Again, for Polly as well, when she was shooting with the smoke. So we'd have like shots where it was, you know, smoky, shots where it wasn't. So again, it was, we had to really glue that scene together visually, um, along with Polly uh, and obviously in the DI. Um, and then, you know, a lot of, uh, like, explosions, uh, CG explosions and fire, uh, crates blowing up. So it was kind of a broad strokes, you know, it was a huge battle. So it was a mixture of everything. But it was a really, you know, it was one of my favourite scenes to do. And and seeing it come together and really just working on it as an edit, you know, rather than individual shots um, was was really fun. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, I can imagine. And, you know, you mentioned continuity. So how tricky was it working around the fact that the battle takes place at dawn, right in that phase in which the sun <laughs> begins to rise over the horizon? Um, I have to imagine that was quite difficult, right? Yeah, I mean, you've got minutes, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes before that's it, it's gone. So, and obviously you can't shoot what you need in that time. So, um, but, you know, the opening scenes, again, because we were shooting there for so many days, mm -hmm. you know, we did manage to capture that, but we did do you know, some sky replacements. I mean, Polly did a lot of it in the DI with the skies, you know, getting that continuity from where we had like overexposed or blue skies, et cetera. Uh, but it was really, you know, capturing that right lighting throughout, um, you know, over that period of time. So it was pretty tricky, yeah. Yeah, and you know, then when it came to like the blood spl splatter and other similar uh, similar effects, not just in the oil battle, but in any battle throughout the movie, you know, mm -hmm. how did you walk that fine line between um, making the blood look as realistic as possible and not bordering on gratuitousness or going beyond what a PG-13 rating would justify? Exactly. You know, when we first came on the film, I was like, great battle, you know, it's going to be fights and blood and, you know, and then found out that it was a PG-13. It was like, OK, so the fine line, you know, it has to look realistic. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to have something in there. You can't have anything. But as you said, you can't, you know, you can't be like spurting uh, jugular or, or or blood spurts, you know, but it's not that it wasn't for that. It's all about the battle and, you know, these amazing women. So we just had to put enough in that, you know, uh, it, it was realistic without being over the top. And actually, we did pretty well with it. We didn't really get any kickbacks. Um, you know, we discussed it early on again. And we just did a few tests of like, is this enough? Is this too much? So, uh, you know, it, it was good. There was enough in there without it being gratuitous. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just the oil battle in particular, like you said, it's such an extensive scene. I believe it clocks in at like seven to eight minutes and it's just, it's epic. And um, if even if you look back, it looks so realistic. Um, it really looks like a battle that took place at dawn. Um, and then I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the final battle, which is at night. So in pitch darkness, yeah. and obviously you have a ton of fire everywhere. So talk about the process of working on that scene and how that differed, for example, from the oil battle in terms of the challenges that you sort of had to overcome. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had to, we had the addition of our, our fort top up in the background there. Um, 
we also had again the same thing really the the wind you know we couldn't it was a protected building for starters so you couldn't set things on fire obviously right. uh, and a lot of the stuff we had within the courtyards and the builds you know you could put flame bars down some to some extent but again the wind when it blew the flames were like horizontal uh, sort of vertical or sorry horizontal so that looks weird um and then you'd get a day where there's no wind and then they were like perfectly upright and just blowing gently mm-hmm. so we had a lot of that to contend with and really it was just you know, it's a really poignant. And they go around and setting fire to what essentially, you know, is it, it's like the barracoons, and it's terrible. So we had to make, you know, see this progression of this fire burning um, throughout that scene. So again, it was we just shot a lot of elements, and actually, it was great. We took um, a lot of the uh, set pieces down to the studios on the last three days and burnt them. It was great. Wow. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, we could use some of that within the scene rather than just going all CG. We didn't need to. So um, we had a lot of uh, mixture of elements and, and 3D, but most of it was 2D sort of fire elements and smoke, really, to be honest. Um, so again, it was a really continuity thing and mm-hmm. seeing that build up of destruction as we go throughout that scene. Yeah, I mean, once again, it's such a, a stunning scene and it's also su- such an emotional payoff uh, for Naniska, especially. I just yeah. really, really enjoyed that. Um, I would like to end this on a bit of a lighter note um, because I had read an interview with you in which uh, you said, and you mentioned it just now, actually, you know, how much you were looking forward to seeing this movie, especially some of the bigger battle scenes on a big screen with friends and family. So have you had the chance to do that? And if so, what was that experience like seeing this movie come to life on the big screen? Oh, do you know what? It's when you're in it and you're finishing it and you're racing to the deadline. We had such a short post period, you know, and it was a real sort of scramble to the end. So you can't really, you know, and you're watching it, but you're not watching it because you're yeah, busy looking at the work you've got to do. <laughs> so um, actually when we sort of stepped away from it, I think the first time I saw it was at um, TIFF uh, right. in Toronto. And to be in the audience with everybody and, and you know, because we, you just, you can't separate yourself from it when you're in it. Uh, to sort of have stepped away for a couple of weeks and then sit in this crowd. It was amazing. Like the atmosphere, like the emotion um, on people. It was just like... A really lovely way to finish the whole process um and then after that with family and friends i watched it but then i had friends reaching out going oh my god i've just seen the woman king oh my god it was amazing you know oh, so, nice. so yeah it was it was great yeah and i'd heard because i mean for us we couldn't really see you could watch the introduction at tiff but we can't actually see you know how the audience responded after the movie was over but i heard that it was like rapturous applause and everything is that what the i mean it was like was? uh you know the pairs on the back of my neck everything was standing up on end it was like you actually got goosebumps it, you could really feel the emotion around the theater it was incredible uh, really that- amazing that's great. And I feel like I've seen a lot of videos. Uh, there was one from France where there was a screening and the audience just um, erupted afterwards. So it's really nice to yeah. see the response uh, to that movie, right? Yeah, it's great. Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I fear we're out of time, um, but thank you so much for uh, talking me through your process. It's really interesting. And uh, again, congratulations on the massive success of this movie. Thank you. And, and thanks for having me. Mm-hmm.